Martian ants are balancing on a tightrope as the FIBA player loses her strings and weaves the whole thing together with big iron snowshoes. Luckily it snowed last night. The crater rocks over, that's your mission. To call it the Lower East Side. Twelve panels in a row. The melt is on. Inside the artist's mind is his hair. No, you know better. Hair goes on the outside. Drifting over Angel's forehead reflects in a black disc that rescues the symmetry of light. And what the hell is this poem talking about? What's the meaning of meaning? Yeah. What's the purpose of purpose? Yeah. What's the use? Can I use it? It feels so good to refuse it. Yeah. Refuse to be burnt out. Refuse to interpret. Refuse to move. Refuse to refuse. Refuse to shut up. Inside the synagogue is Mars. Inside Mars. There's your apartment. And behind the door, an old woman is waiting you in. Come on in, she says. Please, come in. The trip to Mars is just a little jaunt. A passenger. You gotta walk in art. Walk in the artist's mind. Walk in the poem. Walk in the synagogue of your apartment. Just stroll right past Mars. And keep going.
right, we're going to entertain the crowd for a minute. How's everyone feeling tonight? Great. Woo! Thanks for having us here, Clayton and friends. So we're going to huh? And Keith, Keith Hatchell, please. Let's do that, Keith Hatchell. We have a nice camera on the Beach Wilds. And Kelly Chen on the Beach Bar. Thank you. Wisdom is you. Welcome you out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is the performance section. Uh, I will be sitting here. And I'll leave these seats are all taken. I'm going to order seats that we're not taking. Yeah. So, I don't know if you're going somewhere over there. But uh, this is the intent. Hey, was this there somebody? Thank you. 
one on one. Get the horse. One of the for this that one final chance and uh, you can sing along with us if you'd like. It's very simple. Music for the body, music for the soul, music for the body. This is mind control. You're not going to put no people shipping in me, yo.
Welcome back to the Anchors, and we're uh, really happy to be doing this. It's, uh, we'll have to see, this is supposed to be our last year. Uh, Alan Coffin said, by God, he's going to turn this down. And uh, for many he has. So I think people should uh, speak out, because I think it really represents what Kathy is. Uh, it's not really about her writing, it's about the symbol. And it's about somebody that stood up, that uh, really went against the grain, and became, um, and really made a major contribution. And that's what everybody here has done. And it also shows that we still have a community. And so we're really happy with that. And the whole vision of this is, is the overlap. And if you look at the overlap, and if you look at this overlap, there really is an overlap between the first year and now the fifth year. And you can just start seeing how things are really kind of coming together. And the other thing that sort of really, I guess, peaked off uh, Kaufman was that we started going global. We had a very successful uh, event in Toronto. We were getting into Montreal. Somebody in Germany was going to pick it up. And, we had to and the point is this, is that, you know, the whole community is being taken over by global, uh, you know, if you start looking around the neighborhood, like we have Ai Weiwei from China, we have Banksy from London, we have the Shepherd Ferry from LA, we have Stick from London. All this art is being imported into uh, New York. So art's just, uh, New York's just becoming the marketing capital, not the art capital. But we want to make downtown ours again. If you start looking at the list and going to, and weaving it together, it's astonishing how many people are linked together. Uh, Keith here did uh, uh, um, Ruby Rainer's music for her movie. Uh, Steve. Uh, he played, also played with Richard Lloyd. Uh, we have Jim Fleming here from the first year. Uh, his um, during Orange or to the Hemp Eaters, which is uh, a book that's going to be coming out soon. I have a little bit to do with that. But that is Autonomy Media. Autonomy Media crosses over with like, Jim Feast and Ron Cole and the Unbearables. And so there's this huge overlap. And then there's Alice. And Alice did the uh, put in a photograph. Alice is already been an actor recipient, but she put in a photograph because of uh, Leslie and uh, Adam Alexander. Uh, yeah. Yay, yes, yay. And then we have Penn Arcade, of course. Everybody knows Penn Arcade. So um, we also have Samoa here. Samoa's an actor. Samoa! So that's a big deal. And so uh, there's this, it's, it's really a community. And if you start going through the list, it just weaves all of us together. And it shows that there is a community, and an art community, and it is really important. And so, um, is it over? <coughs> so let's hear a big boo for Alan Kaufman. Hey. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe why somebody would want to end this. Oh. Elsa Award. And they want the Elsa Award. Yeah. 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 And the idea was to go global because global is trying to take over us. So why shouldn't the avant-garde, why shouldn't we, why shouldn't the outsiders, the misfits, those other people, artists, why shouldn't they reach around the world? And I think that we should. So on that yeah. note, I'm going to pass it over to Cameron.
honor to have been a Kathy Apper Award recipient. It was the only award I've ever received in my entire life. They're like incredible collages filled with all of our artwork. And um, this year, wow. this year is especially beautiful by Steve Ellis. And they open up, and uh, all the people that contributed are in the pieces are inside. Shocking. 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 Uh, is there some? Is there? Um, oh, I have sort of a nerdy thing to do. Can you hand me that little bag up there? I wanted to, before the award ceremony started, before everyone got really tired, close your eyes, Clayton. Being way ahead of her time, 
and she's been a generous woman when um, uh, my house burned down. She invited Samoa and I to come and live with her on 4th Street, and she literally saved our lives. And um, right. she's, she's been Woo! there for us, and she's not feeling great. Um, she's, she's over on Elder Street, yeah, she's, she's got cancer, and is she also, um... Uh, Steve is going to get the award, and he'll tell us a little bit about it. Uh, okay, and Philly is a filmmaker, she's a wonderful painter, she's a, she's a wonderful actress, she's a fantastic actress. All the way back to Naked Eye Cinema, was involved in the Super 8 uh, movement with Cambria mm -hmm. Samoa, Jack Waters, a lot of people, all actor recipients, by the way. I'm sorry? She's a star of Agent of Paradise, Mary Villa. Star of Agent of Paradise, there you go. M.M. Sarah, another actor recipient, uh, filmmakers co op. Okay, Steve, come on up and uh, you're taking the box for Philly. All right, Steve. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. So Steve went and got this, um, accepted the award for Philly Lifetime Achievement, Philly Abe. In an increasingly bland and beige world, artist, performer, and icon, Philly Abe is a much needed riot of color and energy. She is a visionary artist of chaotic beauty and a beacon of originality. At one time living in the basement of ABC No Rio, Philly was a fixture at the pyramid in the 80s, bringing her unique brand of performance art to the stage in the East Village. She was part of seven days of creation at ABC No Rio in 1983 and new Leonard Beach Hotel project in 1989 of artists decorating rooms in Miami Beach, both exhibitors and created by Allied Productions. She's the star of many films, directed by Todd Guerreau, with whom Philly became a muse for for over two decades. Notable Guerreau films starring Philly include Once and Future Queen, The Trouble of Perpetual Deja Vu, and most recently, The Side of Heaven, 2016. She starred in Agent of Paradise by Mary Bellis and was involved in screenings at Naked Eye Cinema. Her film credits include appearances in the films of Jack Waters, Carl George, Mike Kuchar, and in the 90s, Philly fronted the punk East Village band Eager Meat, which supported the album America is a Theme Park. In 2004, she co-founded the noise art collective Infinity SS, St. Stanton, with Stanton Street artist friends Carlucci, the magician, Benson Viag, Yanga, Steve Ellis, Giannis Kurtwright, Chris Morrow, Craig Klein, Kozuki Aoki, and Mayuka Nobuta. They collaborated on art and their noise band performed at the Knitting Factory, Arlene's Grocery, and CBGB's. Philly, Philly also, Condor 8, also aka Condor 8's artwork has been self-described as old style thrown against the wall of now. Spray paint noise, markers collage, and one foot in the Stone Age, the other in string theory. <laughs> she writes the cover of Raw Vision issue 66 in 2009, where her work was described as a hybrid practice that was consistently harnessed both punk with punk irreverence and graffiti and transgression to channel demons. She's known, she's shown her work with Christina Varga in Woodstock, New York, and 
Phyllis Kind Gallery in Chelsea. Her art, whether it is her acting, painting, music, or just being her greatest creation, her own true self will last forever. She is the East Village Joan of Arc, Queen of Time and Space. <laughs> comes a poster, which was uh, the sport of the uh, the box and the uh, the booklet. The book is uh, Villager and Overthrow Boxing. Overthrow Boxing has three women champion boxers, so that's uh, something that's really important. And uh, C. Bells also did the poster, so with the box goes a poster. And a catalog from Autonomy Media. And the one thing that we're really uh, sort of pleased about with this, and if you look at the Autonomy Media uh, catalog. Calendar. It, calendar. <laughs> uh, here's my editor. Calendar log. <laughs> I would be lost without him, as you can tell. But uh, one thing that we're really happy about between the uh, the book and the uh, calendar is uh, the number of women. Are, what's that? Avant-garde artist and writer calendar. And many, many are women. So we're happy with the numbers of women that we get in the Acker Awards as well as in the. Uh, <laughs> Very good. And moving on. The next recipient of the Acor Award is for community activism. And the award goes to Eugene Fedorko. Yay! Hi, everybody. Uh, when I first moved to New York in 1981, uh, People were already beginning to die all around me in my community, which is the gay community. And you know, gay men, we have a black sense of humor sometimes. Yes. We would uh, be, there was this ironic uh, statement that we all joked about that, uh, oh, we're in New York, queer today, gone tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> that's how people, okay. So we were a community in crisis, and so many people were dying that I uh, couldn't keep up, really, with all my friends and loved ones and sexual partners and comrades and activists and uh, artist friends who were just like dying. So I started keeping a list, and there are 1,100 people on that list now. Uh, and these are all people that I knew, and when they left, they took a part of me with them. The book was very personal, uh, but of recent years I have been wanting to make it more public because it's a historic document. And before AIDS and the whole epidemic get sanitized, before the Reagans get celebrated for uh, being saviors, which they were not. Fuck them! Yeah. Yeah. Fuck them! Yeah. Fuck them! The Reagan's were to AIDS and HIV what Trump is to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, exactly. And before any of that stuff gets forgotten or marginalized, I wanted to make the book public. And the, I, if anybody wants a copy of the book, there are 16 pages, uh, double columns. There's like 1,100 people. Uh, you could see me after the award ceremony. and. We'll make arrangements to get you a copy of the seminar. I, I want to take this one more thing for you. Uh, I want to thank the women who, during the horrible years of the epidemic, jumped in uh, to help uh, with activism, starting political groups, uh, just to help and support and start all of this groundswell of political movement, a lot of which uh, became act up. And <laughs> 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 I 
project to write a book about this place, about the history of my family coming here. And in many ways, it's about the fact that rather than being avant-garde, I'm a chronicler of my father and mother who were champions. They were truly avant-garde in that they both created a world that was unimaginable at the time. My mother, who was a proud organizer for the Abraham Lincoln Brigade when she was at Cooper Union, had the courage to, one, marry a guy who wasn't Romany like herself, and two, um, made it possible for me to grow up in a family with two fathers when that expression was unheard of and undreamed of. Um, at least undreamed of openly. Um, many people in theater know that um, having two dads and a mom was not that uh, uncommon at the time, but also mom was in no way appeared to mom, uh, to dad. It was a loving family of three, which was an avant-garde statement of its day. And so um, I urge you all to uh, read the book, uh, The Girl in the Safe. Uh, when we talk about the popularization of things, I know that when the movie comes out, it will be all about organized crime. But, <laughs> but I know that we'll all appreciate is a story of courage to live a life on the Lower East Side that was unimaginable. And a quick couple of words, being especially that this is uh, this is genius, the, uh, the real power behind uh, all this. <laughs> Kathy Acker Award. We're going into our writer's section. And the next recipient. <laughs> Shine making, having me come up here, give you the heebie jeebies a little bit, like, oh, it's nervous making. Um, but um, for the next recipient, goes to we have a group of writers, and the next Kathy Acker Award goes to Deborah Pintanelli. <laughs> Writing to make us understand what writing was 
and it's not necessarily palatable. It's not something that you want to read at night to, to go to sleep to. It's not like something that you want to, you know, read to your children. But she, and so I feel that what we do is we sacrifice our egos to disrupt. And so we're not famous, we're not bestsellers, we're not, you know, but we disrupt. Jim Brody. Jim Brody was definitely an outlaw poet, a uh, digger. Uh, eventually, he lived the sex life that Kathy wrote about in Thanks to Die Babes. But the point is, is that it's not about literature per se. It's about the spirit. I don't know who that much about the Statue of Liberty. I mean, I've been out to the Statue of Liberty. I know a little bit about Gishu Kuri, the Huddle Masses, and all of that. But it's a symbol. It's a symbol of not only New York, it's a symbol of America. And the thing about Kathy is, it's not just about her literature. It's about the symbol of this woman that stood up. And not just as a woman, but as a person. So it isn't just a feminist statement, it's a statement for everybody. And the thing of it is, is that we have, you know, gardeners. Gardeners facilitate creativity. A lot of the gardens in the Lower East Side make it possible. They're a venue that's a place where people can go and express themselves. We have venue people. We have, um, you know, the whole cross-section. It's, it's just not artists and poets and writers. It's also performers. It's everybody that makes a contribution to the community as a whole. It's the venue people like like uh, Lorcan and uh, Jeannie. I mean, without them, we wouldn't be able to be artists. So it's about the whole cross section. It's uh, the the Oscars are about film. The Grammys are basically about uh, music, and this is about everybody. It's about community, and that's what Kathy represents. And I really don't comprehend the difficulty that uh, they're having with this. I mean, it sort of reminds me, Jim Feast was uh, reading to me a thing today about the academics and they've become the jackals of, uh, of, of, the, uh, of the creative world. What and it's kind of like Kathy the academics are the ones, what's that, Jim? Kathy said that. Kathy said that, yes. Well, Jim read it to me from her book. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, it's, it's those who didn't are now speaking for those that did. And that's one of the problems that we're really facing now. And I don't want these people speaking for me. You know, I want to speak for myself. And that's the thing about Kathy, is that she's speaking for all of us in a different way. Whether you like her writing, you don't like her writing, you know, what's the Statue of Liberty about, who made it, I don't know. <laughs> the box contains, um, just speaking metaphorically for things being cut up, just such an incredible array and different contributions from so many different artists. But it's so beautiful. I wish everyone in the audience could really take a peek at what's inside of this. It's like little pieces of people's heart and soul. And it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I got to meet Kathy Acker when she was getting tattooed at Jonathan Shaw's tattoo parlor. Oh my god. Um, and I walked in and I've never been so terrified in my life. They were both fighting. And he was tattooing her back and they were screaming and yelling at one another and she there laid one of the the most uh, expressive impressive uh, punk rock uh, literary and academic most incredible writers of our time and so i got that was the first time i got to meet kathy <laughs> so what an incredible thing to name this award after her and um i would i have no children and i don't sleep at night so i'll definitely be reading <laughs> I just want to mention, since we're looking in the box, is that um, for the last few years we've had Zito, and Zito does an original drawing on Comic-Con. Yeah, Zito! What's that? Yes. Yes, yeah, Zito. Ready for Zito. And this year he picked out ten people that had uh, sort of symbolized the Lower East Side, that had died of AIDS. And this one is who? Well, that was Klaus Klaus. Klaus. All right. Beautiful, right? Yeah. So the box has uh, one of ten different... Um, Zero drawings. Thank you. Klaus used to work here. Pardon me? Klaus used to work here. Did he? So Klaus knew me. You know what I was wondering? I, I, I don't know if we can ask you this, Clayton, but is there a way to see all of the books, all of the awards throughout the years so we can all look at what's inside of them? Is there a place where we can 
I'd, I'd love for that to happen. Beautiful Just, idea. Uh, all yeah. be able to share and website. Contain. I like looking and touching things, sort of. Oh, but beyond the website, maybe, maybe there's a place or a room for that. Didn't they give the World Trade Center all those people a little tiny room to put their memorabilia? Um, <laughs> Um, and Klaus Nomi, I got to meet when I first came to New York. Klaus Nomi was a wonderful baker, a wonderful neighbor, and I think what Clayton's talking about with us remaining and keeping downtown alive is that we're, I guess in this day and age, more or less sharing our telephone numbers and emails, and um, not just talking to each other um, virtually, but by being here like this which is also very awkward, by the way. <laughs> very embarrassing. Um, but you know what I mean, just for us to remain together and do maybe show up for things we don't necessarily really want to. Um, <laughs> uh, one of the quick points on the organization factor is that uh, right before the event started, Cassandra, Cassandra gave me these uh, these were supposed to be in the box, but uh, they didn't make it into the box. She has her piece in the box. It's a goodie by the box. She let it come up. So each person that gets the box also gets one of these. So I have to. It's an original print. Yeah, original print signed by uh, Cassandra. The whole one is two feet long. Oh, yes. So I'm going to uh, pass these out to the people that already have the box, and I'm going to remember to uh, give the people when they come up. Ray, and the next recipient goes to. Julie Patton. Yeah. Um, she works in the living theater. She 
worked with the living. Yeah, she's a real legend in this community. So, um, words, like, words like these um, go on and on and on because they're about art meets activism. So it's not just about me, but what I can do and say for others. So thank you for listening.
came to the Lower East Side in 1961 from California. I was a poet. I wanted to learn how to live poetry. I was here. I became an activist here. We had a bookstore, Icon Books. Uh, we worked with the block committees. Um, we started the block, uh, block committee actually on 4th Street, on 5th Street. Um, this community means a lot to me. We became you know, involved in the women's movement, the gay liberation struggle, and on and on and on and on through the years. I came from California. I never left. Uh, I never intend to leave. This award means a lot to me because I love this community. And as a community award, I accept it. And thank you for making my life into a poem. Sophist. It's a sophist. A sophist. A sophist. 
I call it Estibus, but they call it Estobus. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go with Estobus. And I talked to you, and I said, Estobus. But I don't want to say that. But, um, yeah, it's really a beautiful, well-crafted magazine, and it takes a lot of time and effort to do it, and it's a very rare publication, and it needs support, so if anybody is interested in supporting the magazine and artistic effort in publishing, I would support God with these <laughs> And the next award goes to theater, for theater, and um, the next Kathy Acker recipient is Roman Prim Primitivo Albert. <laughs> I, my English is second language, so I have to put something in my advice to talk about what, what am I feeling about this uh, award. Uh, well, I'm still in shock. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you, everyone. Uh, particular Clayton, thank you for recognizing the community of the creativity people and the lower east side. Um, Take the inspiration of Bertolt Brecht, in Mexico we say Bertolt Brecht. I guess it's uh, Bertolt Brecht. I have a salt in over here. Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico! Viva la humanidad! I got a Greek! Yeah! That's a name of Bertolt Brecht. You bring Greek? And um, this is, uh, this Greek, this Greek over here, uh, is symbolize many things. They can symbolize the house. They can symbolize the labor of the working class people. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yes. They can symbolize also wars and divisions. It all depends on the divisions of the brick layers. Right now, all the institutions start to pull apart. And I think it's time to include in all kinds of people, all social classes, ethnic groups, yeah. genders, yeah. every single being on this planet. And back to Bertolt Brecht. Um, Theory should be more just relating the feelings and impulse, or entertaining the society. But should we encourage those talks and feelings to transform in humanity? And now, amigos, we should break in this bread. I have a hammer over here, no? Not the stretch. <laughs> well, thank you also to Chris Sofia and Antonio Cito and Clayton Patterson and Yoshi and everybody. Thank you so much. Shane and home. And home, excuse me. Shane and home. Uh, Shane and home. Uh, in a way, um, Kathy Acker Award. Uh, he robbed 29 banks. Uh, <laughs> 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 great story. He was in Punk, LA. A very interesting guy. And when he got out, he uh, got into uh, tattooing. And he makes art now. So he's a very interesting, inspiring person. And uh, he's got great stories about robbing banks. <laughs> okay. We don't discriminate on creativity. The next Kathy Acker recipient goes to Sally Young. Yeah. Thirty-seven years ago, with a two-year-old, and people said I was crazy. 
And I am no fan. So here I've raised two kids here, making art and go crazy. And <laughs> I got into community gardens and I just never left. And uh, thank you very much for this award.
you know, it's, it's really nice to, uh, to be included. And uh, yeah, I did want to thank Clayton for everything he's done. You know, he really did include um, me and a bunch of women when we started out, um, you know, in the early 90s and uh, opened up a lot of doors for me that were closed. So, you know, I wouldn't be here, you know, without that support. So, uh, so that's it. Anyway, thank you so much. <laughs>
Yeah, sure, sure. Penny. Um, uh, we need, um, I don't know how many of you know Kembra, uh, Kembra, how many of you know Cassandra's story, but in 2011, she was abducted by adult services and has been um, incarcerated in nursing homes for all these years. And she, um, what we, what we, what just recently happened was that the adult services were mandated by Judge Kennedy um, to, to, no, not just to release her, to um, have all of her belongings and all of her artwork inventoried and put into storage and paid. They, they did not pay. And her, all of her life's work was auctioned off like, you know, they, they auctioned off to somebody who bought all of her stuff. So what we need to do right now, and this is really important, we want to have everybody write a letter. So I'm gonna give you my email. If you write to me, I will give you the address. I don't, I don't know an easier way to do it. So my email is msmizpennyarcade at gmail. And you can call Clayton, he has my email. If, or, or somebody who knows me, everybody has my email. Please, we need every, if everyone in this room wrote a letter to the standing judge, not Judge Kennedy, it's another judge, that's why I need you to write me. Look, this could happen to any of us. This is, this is what we're living with right now. It could happen to you. So, if, if this is really a fucking community, if this is really a community, then you will get behind this, because this woman has been tortured. I have written about it on Facebook, on my page, for years, and every time I write about it, some jerk writes in, what's she in jail for? No, she's not in jail. Her crime is being a woman alone over the age of 72. And it could happen to everyone in this room. Okay, mspennyarcade at gmail. Thank you. One of the last questions about the uh, idea of community and the actors, and that is I got a call one day from this person who was an actor recipient, I won't say what his name is, but he uh, was at a flea market, and at the flea market he discovered all of these works, like Cassandra. So he contacted me and said, geez, what's, uh, why is her work for sale in these places? And then through that I was able to get a hold of a social worker and like that, and then it turned out, and it took a bit of time because the social worker told me that everything was safe and that yeah. The, uh, the, the storage was paid for, and so we sort of wondered, well, if it's paid for, why is this work out there? There were photographs, life photographs, you know, all her artwork, her whole life. And um, it ended up that uh, they, they just sold it and nobody was in control of it. And it's kind of an interesting story, not really interesting in an interesting way, but the, uh, the judge seems to be sort of compla complacent in this. I mean, everybody is sort of involved in this slipping away. And the loss of her money, the loss of her apartment, the loss of her uh, everything. everything. So anyway, that's uh, the sun. And uh, all right, thank you. Great, no, any local politicians involved? Nobody does anything. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, okay, of course they are. That's wink, wink. I'm so glad you could make it here. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. I've been reading here about you for a long time on Penny Page too. Congratulations for being here. It's definitely some ages bullshit. And who expected, and how did we even think we would get to be 70, 80, 90, 100 in this, in this generation? But we are staying alive, and it's a miracle, and we, I, do, I do agree with um, us needing a, a home the way the, the actors of Los Angeles have. Where do they get, where does... Where did um, where do all the actors go to that they have homes for elderly whatever? I don't know. Where did Artie Shaw go? I was always talking to Artie Shaw. At any rate, I wish uh, we could make a home available for one, all of us in the Lower East Side on Avenue A, B, C, D. 
you know, a place for us to dwell together as we're falling out of our bathtubs, not expecting to live over, over 40, 50, 60, 70, and, and this great lady getting to stay here for all this time. I'm so glad you're here. It's, a, it's wonderful. Um, how to survive, how do punk rockers survive, how do East Village people survive, you know, it's just so, uh, at any rate. Um, yeah, quickly, uh, because, you know, we lost Cabrini, we lost the Elder Stoker, we basically lost all of the uh, nursing homes on the Lower East Side. Uh, we lost the, uh, the Bridgerton House, uh, which was another scandal. So there's almost no place yet left. The uh, St. Vincent's Hospital, uh, they took that away, Beth uh, Israel was going to close. I mean, it's like, where do all these wealthy people think they're going to go when they get sick? It's like, there's not even hospitals anywhere. I mean, the whole thing is ridiculous. Um, the next uh, recipient is um, Steve Ellis. Someone 
and someone always knew someone who knew someone who had a space when you needed it. And if you desperately needed money, someone knew someone who knew about some temp work. But the priority was always the art. And all the arts lived and loved and played together. And our community included all the freedom seekers, the ones who came to New York City so they could be free to be whoever they were in a way they weren't allowed to be where they came from. Art freed all, cured all, and was all, or so we thought. Then in the late 80s, I realized my community had scattered, lost its heart, found fear. Some had left the city, but oh, so many had died. Lots of the old performance spaces closed down, and we needed community more than ever. So I started Shayla Rowe, a theatrical salon. Our own little private world where we could continue to live our art. Then in the late 90s, I met a group of recent college graduates who came looking for the New York City artistic communities of the 70s. And we were blessed to find each other. And to them I say, in your words, your music, your movement, your lines, your colors, your voice, your community, lies the hope for this city, this country, Civilization isn't particularly meaningful without art. And you can't have art without experimentation and risk. And you deserve the time and space needed to do that. I am so blessed by my community. Thank you.
with the Rednecks. Thank you for being in water. You want some water, Clayton? Okay. Um, thank you so much. The next recipient goes to Perry Mosco, aka Peewee. Extortion and cough up the planet from becoming free. Steal the world into greedy fat pockets so nobody's got nothing. Aching soul coughing, walking glass coughing, hiding from truth that's all been rearranged. The only kind of change, economy and change gripped tighter. Crawling underneath, hunt for nickels, pennies, dimes. I pledge my fealty, hoodwink blind. Pick my lesser evil, pick it through trash. Democracy or mockery, the 99% take a backseat to the ones, blanket our descent. All seeing eyes shrouded in fear, privacy imprisoned on every street corner. Personality, commodity, live and breathe, feed the beast. Map the genome of your desires, sold to the lowest bidder. Take from everyone, float back nothing. Bloat filthy corporations, turning out demise. Status quo, house on fire, nailed to the floor. Nothing ever changes, nothing's the same. Spiraling down, the depth so insane. Politics of nothingness, the language so inane. Beaten down, broken down, they can't put down the flame. Soul fire, wildfire, world on fire, ignite. Up the fight, freedom, peace, the human right to common sense. Kingdom of heaven and earthly plane, fuck this world of pain. I'm going through changes, I'm not the same. Nothing to lose, I am the news. It's my world, it is our cane. You'll find out who and how and why the fuck I came. Why fight? I'm proud of that. 
Um, thank you, Kiwi, for being here and for being so forthright, for being in bands for all these years. Thank you, everyone. I see so many artists in this room. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Pete. Hi, Pete. Um, I see so many friends here. Hi, Kate. I'm sorry. I don't. Why have I never even? I don't know your last name. It's ridiculous. Penny Arcade said to me a couple of years ago, I've known you, Camera, for 25 years, and we've never been to each other's homes. We've got to start visiting one another. We live three blocks away from one another. Why are we shut-ins? We didn't move to New York to become shut-ins. And when I visited you, Penny, that was, that was a, an awakening, you know? We need to... But that's because we used to see each other out, because we had places Go True in that. the neighborhood, and now there's nowhere to go out in the neighborhood anymore. True that. East River, 8 o'clock at night, Gothletics for free. Yeah. 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 Gothletics. Yeah. Do you want to say something? Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, we also have Veronica Vera, we have Val, another uh, acrobator, we have Bonnie over here, another acrobator, yeah. and then Sarah, of course. So it's. Um, Wonderful, right? It's a wonderful audience, and thank you for all of your patience. And and um, it's really great to be in theater 80. Did, did who went to the films here? Who saw movies here? Um, seeing Butterfield 8 really changed my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the next recipient of the. Um, uh, the Kathy Acker Award. You think Kathy would be having a nice time? What would Kathy Acker be doing? She'd probably be trying to pick you up. Like, or you know, just, I don't know, showing us all her time back to you. Um, okay, so um, the next recipient goes to Catherine Bloss. Catherine! songs go all the hopes and hurts, 
the angers, fears, the wants, and aspirations. John Steinbeck. Verse, chorus, verse, chorus, guitar solo, verse, chorus in this room to make a song together tonight. Bridge, yeah. With performance art inserted. Unwantingly, actually. Okay, so Jamil is not here, and um, the next award um, goes to um, in the film department. And it goes to the one and only sister of ours, Katrina Guys, so look, this, in this little Christmas bag, I made little booklets, and please ask me for one, or I'll pass them around or something. Because um, Clayton asked me to put something in the booklets I made in the boxes. Thank you, Steve. Um, that represent my work, and I was like, look, I make movies, and, and so I made a zine for this, and so that's what's in the bag here. I made extras for you guys. The recipients get full color. Y'all get black and white, so. <laughs> Listen, printing ink. Okay, um, I just want to say thank you so much to Kemba Fowler and Samoa. Uh, you got, you're the first person who hired me to do photography. That's what I started out with, is photography. And I kind of like, was inspired by your movie making, and um, you have been a mentor to me. And, uh, you know, the availabism, and like, what do you mean a holiday? We don't take holidays, we're artists, we're gonna like, you know. I just really like, I'm inspired by your work ethic. And um, thank you, Clayton, for, the, I, you know, I used to live on your block back in, when I first came to the city. You know, we were, we were down the street neighbors and the riots kind of happened. I went to a party in Jersey on I So we you were there. <laughs> I was more interested in drinking than driving. Um, so, <laughs> thank God, it's a lot. And, um, I just want to say that um, there are people in the room that have helped me through, like making films, like collaborators, um, instigators. And I made all these girl gang films. For those of you who don't might know my work, I made all these girl gang films, and it just they just exploded because people would be like, I want to be in them. I want to. You're making a girl gang film. You should have a gang of like chicks with red hair who can play chicken because I got red hair and I can play chicken. And so you know what I mean. Like, and so some of these people are here tonight. And Jenny Slag is here. Who helped me print these booklets? Thank you so much, Jenny. Um, and uh, Pete Weiss is here, lifelong friends since we were teenagers. Um, I gotta say, Patrice Helmar is here. And she, I, I went to her. Yeah, like future actor recipient. She's a she's a photographer from Alaska who came to New York to make art, and and she's host, she hosted me last night at the Marble Hill Camera Club. Way the fuck out in Ridgewood where all the kids that are artists that are coming to the city, that's where they're fucking winding up because it's like that's what's affordable now, sort of ish. No, no, they can't. Um, so Ridgewood, Queens, I went out there last night there. and I was really inspired by this community of artists. Thank you so you should much. Be working class. Most of me last night. Have I talked to you too long? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, we're talking about the age range in here, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I. I I get sad when so I read these friends are from Ridgewood, like, artists are probably like, oh, you know, Patty Smith, don't come to New York, young artists. I'm just like, no, I, I, selfishly, I want the young artists to come to New York. Yeah. Because, yeah. You know what I mean? It's inspiring to like know that more people are coming to make the work, you know? Um, this is not a young crowd on the whole, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, <laughs> no, 
I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's really inspiring. Like, I, I, I love to see young artists come around and, and do work. And, so, and she's making a community over here. So, gosh, I'm probably forgetting, forgetting something. What did you say? Teach and you'll be around the young artists. There you go. Yeah. Mary Magdalene Sarah, an amazing teacher, an amazing filmmaker, and also April. Awesome. So, anyway, thank you so much, Clayton, for doing this. I'm sorry I talked so long, but I'm super excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
who pitched in and, and helped us make our work. So my uh, my heart goes out to them in terms of my own special collaborator, Larry Fessenden, the filmmaker who I worked with for many years, um, who essentially was the other half of my uh, team. Um, uh, he's not here tonight, but I just want to acknowledge him and tell uh, him that I love him. Thank you.
So, um, you know, I joined ACT UP and I met so many amazing people through that one sort of, you know, moment in activism. I met um, Alice, of course, and um, other friends, um, Jack and Peter and Kelly and um, I met Annie Sprinkle through and through Annie Sprinkle I actually met Kimber I didn't remember but uh, Kimber and um uh, Tanner came. So I just feel like um, this is a really special moment. I just feel so honored. I just want to bow to you all because um, this is just such an honor to be on this stage to be counted among all these greats and um, just so much beauty and depth and power here. So thank you so much. Archival production section, and it goes to Lewan Jones, an archival researcher and documentary producer. Lewan Jones. Come on, everybody. 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 Come on,
years afterwards, I got a copy of the of that album, but it does not. I was lucky, you know, when I heard him, uh, I just pressed record. He was over the radio, maybe on B, been on BI some stage, oh, yeah, yeah. and it was, I mean, bad reception at all. And um, every year, every year, I put together a CD or a tape or whatnot of songs that get stuck in my head. And this year, you know what song made it? Ask questions. Oh, uh, yeah. Because when you think it, it's, 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 it's very apropos oh, no, for, for, for the time. This stuff is apropos. Yeah. That's what's about. What's great about it? I mean, even this, even this morning, I think, I think it may have been like early this morning, like maybe 3 o'clock this morning. Yeah. I was on my way back from the bathroom to get to the fridge, and I heard, I heard in my head, history will judge us either stupid or harmless. And we know we're not stupid. So, there's, so therefore, we're, we're complicit. I mean, we're complicit in all of this. I mean, I e e even, even, even so far as having rallies on the weekend instead of on Monday morning where we disrupt the system, we're complicit. Oh, it's this, this is nice sunny day, right, great day for a in a little park down. You know, I was, I, I was involved. Yeah, Occupy, like, well, I, like, what's Occupy, what's I, Occupy, Occupy, Occupy Wall Street by camping out in the park seven blocks away. And, and also we're and advertising and ad caged in. Not only that, but advertising it uh, weeks in advance so the cops have enough time to infiltrate and surveil and whoever, whatever they would want to do. But, uh, I was, uh, I actually was involved with, uh, with this group, uh, during, during the 80 anarchist switchboard and we shut down the federal building three times over. And I mean, why shut down? I mean, we showed up 8 o'clock on Monday morning. Wow. And from 8 o'clock in, in the morning until 11.30, no one got in, no one got, no one got out, like 20, 30,000 people. They, they had... Yeah, yeah. They, 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 had, they had to bring a police bus to arrest people. Not just a van, but a bus. And back then, I mean, you know how people go limp when they're arrested now? We did no such thing. If we saw one of our friends getting arrested, 10 of us would, it was called unarresting. You pounce on them, you, you know, not not really violent, but like you, you, you elbow the cop out of the way, you grab your friend, even if you had one cuff on him, and you got him the hell out of there. You would not kowtow, you would not conduct, you know, you're not, you know, kind of it's, 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 you know, it's, it's all sorts of thing. I mean, I actually got out of that because um, it was one of the times that they had a protest out in Wall Street and people were marching up Broadway from Wall Street all the way to Rockefeller Center, taking the streets, doing die-ins, the whole nine. And we ended up, we were going to join up with, join up with ACT UP, but they did not want us. They did not want us. We were not of their kind, so no, no, we don't want to. So we went up, we like we uh, we blockaded the army recruiting station, and then people were. It must have been the dawn of that sort of like change of heart because I saw all these people I had known for years marching counterclockwise, seeing doing the same chants, the same slogans and whatnot, and something snapped. And on a dime, I started marching clockwise and screaming nursery rhymes at the top of my lungs. And I think that's the last protest I went to. It ends up being, I mean, it ends up being theater after a while. But I mean, Jack's, Jack's work, I mean, Jack's, Jack's it's sharp. Yeah, not, not, know not know only know that I know that, but that I had by, by accident, it's like, a, well, who else wants to do so? It was Bob, this guy, Bob Z. He had a zine called Bad News, I was staff writers for. He also did a lot of punk poetry shows and whatnot. It's like, hey, Chris, I know you don't have a band together right now, but I, hey, you want to do something up front? And I did like four four pieces, and I was like, I, I, I actually, actually shook hands with Jack Hardy. And I, I was like, and he's like, um, he's, you know, I, he spawned so many great writers, and yeah. nobody knows who he is. And yeah, I mean, he's, very, he's very, very unassuming. Yeah. 
I mean, just just like that, that guy sitting in the back of the room, smiling quietly. Yeah. But like when he got up there, he's like, you know, librarian gone mad or whatnot. No, he's and, um, brilliant, really. You know, That's I, a great song. I, 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 I told him that, you know. I should have on, actually put that in the box, but based, I didn't. Have and I told him based on uh, hearing uh, hearing the calls from you know, live on, on I wanted to find out. I said, oh, it's 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 been out of print for ages, but I was able to find it. I was it, trying but to still, get his uh, estate to put something. You know, it's, it's anyway. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a great song. Yeah. But um, I put rye grass in the box. Look, anyway. But I mean, yeah. Ask questions. Ask questions would have been so many. I mean, so many things that that song touches on. It just, it just you know, hopscotch is all the way through history. It's like no matter what the, it's no matter what the time there there's unrest and there are people who just let things slide simply because they won't ask simple questions like why the fuck is this happening? Why are we? Why do we have a, a, a budget where over fifty percent is the military? Where we're supposed to be at peace? Right. You know, I mean, not, no, no. Yeah, we've never we've been, been. We've been blinded by. The yeah, yeah. I mean, the be, you, know? you know, and and uh, you know, people don't people don't seem to realize like the, the media itself is is, is just sort of It's a decoy. It, it's all commercials. Commercials are what they what TV is, is, exists on. A lot of stuff is commercial now. You know, even art is commercial. Of course, of course. Kind of I mean, I, I see like uh, you know that that Jeffrey Coons piece with the basketballs and the. Uh, oh, that was a great piece. Great a great piece. A great piece of what? Well, I mean, it was like, basketballs in a fish tank. Basketballs in a fish tank. Slam dunk in a fish tank. He should have broke the backboard. It was the glass should have been cracked or something. Made a statement, but uh, you know, I, I, I walked by this uh, this lobby on Park Avenue, uh, and uh, there were these uh, these uh, this huge art installation. What it was? It was it was canvases or blocks like this big or even bigger. One was red, one was yellow, one was blue, and that was art. I went to uh, I went to PS122. They they had uh, some sort of art exhibit there, and there was. A uh, hipster like art thing. Somebody he took the birthday cake and threw it against the wall, and that was art. I'm like, real art comes from pain. It comes from experience. It comes from you know, you know, you know they, they have they have no scars on their face and they cannot handle pressure. You know, but uh, I did want to give you this. This is my band's my band's latest album. Are you a writer too? I, I'm just a writer, artist, poet, lyricist, photographer. None of my stuff has ever gotten any recognition. Well, no one ever. I, 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 what I like That's to say. Why Monday Night Song Circle. What I like to say. What I like to say. I'm internationally unknown. Right. I have like one person in in, in New Siberia who knows my name. You know, or Novo Sibirsk or whatever. But uh. Anyway, thank you. That's great. But yeah, I do. I carry on Jack's. A lot of people. What I heard is when I heard his name mentioned. I mean, I knew I, I, knew I had to you know, make myself known. Or a bit of a trap in itself because it gets people to put their lives where everybody else can see them. But uh, the so more you channel and yeah, the, the, the more the more you, so you uh, okay. upload, yeah. the longer yeah. they let you make have the videos. So I have like um, there was a night of a hundred poets at Cafe Nico that I put up. I put up like six hours of that as one video. So I mean, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. The, the camera's been running. It's still running now. It's still running now. Just, just in case you said, just in case either of us said anything important. Yeah, you know, I mean, the last time I was here, I, you know, I, I, I was, I ran into Veronica Veer, and we talked porn. We talked about, you know, about when she was working with Mr. Santuanet out in California, and, uh, you know, like, oh wow, yeah, you know, when you, when you were done with that gimp boy, and you told, and you, and you told, and you told your, uh, your associate, like, put him away, put him away, you know, like, tuck it in, you know, where I'm done with him, you know, but uh, 
I, yeah, the crowd is thinning out. I do have a couple of people, including Pee Wee, who I wanted to say hello to. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've uh, I've been I've been I've been I, I've been in Thai ICU. I've been in Thai ICU since Bob Z put their the ICU's cover of Carmen on one of his uh, compilation tapes. Oh yeah. When yeah, when he ran uh, Artists and Writers Underground, Bob Z from Bad News, Bad News Z. I didn't know that was on there. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. He, you know, he had bloodsuckers from outer space, a lot of people from, uh, he's like one of those people who like melded different parts of the scene. Do you have one of those? Um, in my archives, I'll, 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 I'd have to. Uh, we do. Oh, yeah. I, I loved you. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. the, the Steinbeck quote was really amazing. That really just, uh, do you ever just want to come by a song circle, even though, you know, it's going to be nice. Street. Where is it? 8th between B and C. 8th between B and C. Um, and it, some people read poetry, some people write songs. It's a song, it's based on the Jack Hardy team. Yeah. I want to write it down. So what's the address? 303 East 8th. And it's on Sundays at what time? Mondays. 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 What time? Uh, 7 o'clock the doors kind of open, but 8 o'clock the circle starts. And is there an, is it in an apartment? Yeah, it's in my living room. My, my Wow, thank you for the invitation. It's a community, it's a community of writers and songwriters that is a living, breathing, always changing group. So, so you have like a guitar and a keyboard there? Keyboard, there's a piano, a guitar gets passed around, Jack Hardy's a guitar. Piano. That's my that's my thing. Yeah. And like yeah, lately, punk rock I mean, guitar is one thing, but I've been doing solo the piano work for like wow. it's, about, it's about the writing, you know, and the words I'm trying to get them better. We all you know, talk about each other's work, so it's it's not without you know, a little Critique, critique, job here and there. You gotta be able to just take it, right? Jackie. It's constructive criticism. Yeah. Good ears. From the heart. I find that a lot of the ears that have been listening and listening and listening over the years have developed a really good oh, That's kind of fascinating. A little bit intimidating, yeah. but absolutely fascinating. So I'm always in myself intimidated. <laughs> 303 East 8th, 7 on Mondays. Yeah. 303 East 8th Street, 7 on Mondays. Got it? 2R is the apartment number. Fabulous. So how you One doing? One long ring and two short ones. What's that? No, door, no, no, I just, I just, I just, I just, if there was a code for the doorbell. Oh, uh, I, 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 being, I just made that. You're being yeah. facetious. Yeah, yeah. You're being funny. Bond, yeah, yeah it's, it's about Peter Laurie as James Bond. I would have liked to see that. <laughs> Shaking, that's dead. Anyway, I got to bring you in for, uh, the, for Witch's Night Out again. I haven't had you perform that for a while. Thank you. Please. It's great. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that, Thank that, you. That, that, was a, that was a really heck of a piece. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate it a lot, man. It's kind of yeah. like my swan song. Yeah. You know, that kind of just says it all. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like, well, it's right yeah. here. Right? Wow. Thank you. What's your name? I'm Keith Patchell. I'm a composer and a music producer. We did the music before the event started. What, what time did you get here? I got here late. Uh, oh, yeah, we, we did like an yeah. hour performance of music ensemble. Oh, that's upsetting that I missed it. Oh, Damn. There'll be uh, more. I'm, I'm a friend of Kay Blossom's. I go to her um, song writer circle. The circle? So, yeah, it's really great. You she should come just, check it out. She just invited yeah. me. I, yeah, I didn't know about it. Yeah, should, it's, it's a really awesome, awesome thing that she does. Oh, fucking A. Well, yeah, yeah, that yeah, sounds yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I, I play the piano. Oh, you know, fantastic. And, and sing at the piano. So I'd love to get some of that critique, you know, sure, some of that, you know, just that, you know yeah, like below you just the get, belt kind of criticism that and, she and warned me like, about. Some of some of it's really cool. Some of it, you know, can be a little catty, but like, the great thing is just to like bring a song out and play it, a new song in front of people. It's just like, because it just kind of, it births it in a certain way. You know what I mean? No idea. You know? What an amazing! Yeah, I, I, I end up, I end up giving birth uh, at, alone in a dark alley. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! I want to get to get them off. <laughs> So was this videotapes like um Yeah. The, the, the performances he, he did. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I'd love to be able to see it in retrospect. Did you film it? Did I did, absolutely. Really? Yeah, that's what this was all shot for. Um, so We're going to make a, a highlight reel and we'll post it online. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you'll include the introduction, introductory performances? Yeah, no, that's what I was originally talking about. I really love the poem. Yeah, I, I, really good. Thank you so You're much, man. Thanks I'm, I'm very really, much. I, I'm so flattered and yeah, honored. Yeah, no, it was uh, timely, sadly timely. Yeah. Damn, yeah. I feel the same. I yeah, so yeah, much. but I, you know, you gotta stand up and do what you do, right? No, I'm glad you got something out of it. Oh, absolutely. Thank you much. Yes. You know, so I've, I've had my camera running the whole night, including introductory performances. So uh, this will give me a couple oh, of my, cool. my computers on the in the, on the blink, but uh, give me a couple, give me a couple of weeks maybe, and the whole thing in its Thank entirety. You, Chris. Uh, two hours and 54 minutes. And history has eyes, history has ears, history has secrets that are buried for years. Exposes, explicit, history will judge us with a stupid mindset. And we know we are not stupid, ask questions. I got money from the night. Just take one of the four. Okay, so let's do that. Let's make a day. Call me and take out the camera. Okay, sure. No problem. All the way out. 2018, like Cardi B's on the cover. Like, it's okay. Come out. It's fine. Like, like, yeah. And there's like. Thank you.